This is a brief tutorial on density and specific gravity. Density is defined as the mass divided by the volume. The units are usually grams per cubic centimeter or grams per milliliter. That's true since one milliliter equals one cubic centimeter. The formula is D for density is equal to M over V or mass divided by volume. Let's look at an example. If we have an iron nail and it has a volume of 0 0.880 cubic centimeters and has a mass of 6.92 grams, we want to know its density. So if we use D equals M over V, we just plug in our numbers. 6.92 grams divided by 0 0.880 cubic centimeters and we get 7.86 grams per cubic centimeter and that would be the density of the iron nail and if you look that up on a table that's pretty much the density of iron. Looking at another example if we have vegetable oil with the density of 0.916 grams per milliliter we want to know the mass of 225 milliliters of that oil. So we have our density equals mass divided by volume formula but that's going to require rearranging it and solving for the mass. When we do that mass is equal to density times the volume and then we can just plug in our numbers that we have. 0 0.916 grams per milliliter times 225 milliliters the milliliters cancel leaving us with 206 grams of the oil now one way of getting at volume if the it's not a regular shaped solid or a liquid that's conveniently measured in a graduate cylinder is to measure its volume by displacement of water in a graduate cylinder. Volume by displacement, you can find an irregularly shaped object or something that's smaller, inconvenient to measure the dimensions of for a geometry formula and then get its volume when it would otherwise be inconvenient to do so. That's often done in the lab. With a graduated cylinder we put an object in there we measure the volume of water in the cylinder before we add the object and after and the difference is the volume of that particular object. And again that is popular when it's inconvenient or not possible to conveniently measure the shape of or the volume of that irregular shaped object. For example if we have a graduated cylinder into that we can have a volume that's the initial volume if we put in a irregularly shaped object the volume increases by a set amount that difference in volume is the volume of the object in this case if we kinda estimate off of this graduate cylinder which is certainly not quantitative we can show that we got about 7 milliliters up there at the top, 5.1 at the bottom, difference in those being 1.9 milliliters, which we take to be the volume of the object submerged. If we have regularly shaped objects, we can just use the geometry formula if we measure the dimensions of the object as opposed to submerging in water. If you got a rectangular object, the volume is the length times the width times the height. If we got a sphere, the volume is 4 thirds pi times the radius cubed. If we got a cylinder, the volume is pi times the radius squared times the height. If we got 23.4 grams of copper metal, and we add that to 15 milliliters of water, causing the volume to increase to 17.62 milliliters we will know the density of the copper metal. So the volume we say is the difference between the 17.62 and the 15 milliliters yielding a volume of 2.62 milliliters. 
do not fall into the trap of using one or the other or both volumes and for V and the density equation. So we'll use our density equation. We're going to plug in the 23.4 grams and the 2.62 milliliters. Divide that out. We have a density of copper of being 8.93 grams per milliliter, which you find is the literature value. So that's how you use volume by displacement. So why does ice float on liquid water? It'd be sort of surreal to see an ice cube sinking in water. So why? Density of ice is 0.91 grams per milliliter. Density of water is about one gram per milliliter. We find that when water freezes, it expands just a little bit and that increased volume with the same mass results in a slightly lower density which is actually atypical. Most solids are actually more dense than their liquids, but water is somewhat of an exception. But since the density of the ice is less than that of water, it would float on top. Specific gravity. The specific gravity is the density of a substance divided by the density of water. But since Water's density is essentially one gram per milliliter. We can say the specific gravity of a substance is pretty much equal to its density in grams per milliliter. Where we'd have this formula of specific gravity equaling density of the substance divided by density of the water. But again, since density of water is one, we will assume those two to be nearly identical. But since it's the ratio of two densities, Specific gravity does not have units. So let's say we have the specific gravity of concentrated hydrochloric acid is 1.185, which would yield a density of 1.185 grams per milliliter, approximately. How many grams of HCl are there in 175 milliliters? if the solution is 36.31% HCl and 63.69% water. Best way to get at a problem like this is dimensional analysis. So what we can do is go from milliliters of the HCl solution to grams of the HCl solution and then go from grams of the HCl solution to the grams of the HCl contained in the solution. How do we get at that? We can use a density of 1.185 grams per milliliter taken from the specific gravity and then use the 36.31% by mass to get at the grams HCl in the solution. And we'll convert that to a dimensional analysis conversion factor. So if we start with 175 milliliters of solution, we're we'll abbreviate solution SOLN for space. We can use our density as a conversion factor and multiply by 1.185 grams of the HCl solution divided by 1 milliliter. The milliliters of solution cancel, leaving us with grams of HCl solution. And then we can multiply that by a factor that is our percentage, 36.31 grams of HCl divided by 100 grams of HCl solution, where I just assume 100 grams of solution to make the math a little easier. Regardless, the HCl solution cancels, leaving us with grams of HCl. We multiply that out. We get 75.3 grams of HCl contained in that 175 milliliters or 36.31% HCl. Another example, if we have an object with a specific gravity of 1.30, will it float or sink if placed in water? If it has a specific gravity of 1.30, it will in fact sink. Because if it's 1.30, that means it's 1.30 times heavier than water. And if an object's heavier or more dense and it doesn't dissolve in water, it will sink to the bottom. If an object had a lower specific gravity, say 0.5, it would float. This is the end of our tutorial on density and specific gravity.